It's a cell phone world. Calls, texts, and apps. So, can we design apps to help each other and make a better world? Yeah. Life apps. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs>So the um, stop and search app was um, created in 2010. We want to help people know what their rights are when they get stopped and searched by the, by the police in a quick and easy way. Good intentions, but out in the street, how well do apps for good really work? This is where we are right here. Looks like someone's been stopped and searched quite close by. And you can see the, some areas have got more clumping than others. I think it's amazing, you know, I, I, I would have never thought of this sort of idea, but um, they obviously found a sort of need and, and a, a place for it in the market and, and went for it. In London's Central Foundation Girls' School, they've been hard at work, helping spearhead the Apps for Good programme as it takes off in schools across the UK. East London girl Amara is 15. An app is uh, a pro something on your phone that does one thing and one thing only really, really well. Knowledge is like a gift. You have to use it for the good of everyone, really. But otherwise, what's the point of having it if you're going to be selfish with it? My app is called Buzzer Buddies. It's available on the Android market. It's an alarm clock uh, with a twist. It asks uh, you time and date, as usual, and then it asks you why. And this is your chance to record a reason why you need to wake up. Some London kids find it hard to wake up. Buzzer Buddy sends a message to yourself reminding you why you should get up and one to a friend if you're running late. So this is anyone from your contact list. And you write a message. So after you've, you're happy with your message, you press save and then you save your alarm and you're ready to go. Jana and Marjabin have developed an app for people like them who love plants. Yeah, I've got one. Like many apps for good, it's useful not just for East Londoners, but perhaps worldwide. Our app is a gardening app which um, integrates with many features on your phone, such as your weather app, your notes app, your camera, and it tells you um, what's, how you should take care of your plant according to the local weather, so people don't overwater their plant or overnourish their plant um, like they might if they don't know what the weather's going to be like. It's not only old and boring people that can that do garden because from our market research we found out that people around the age of 25, 20s are gardening now. Cape Town, South Africa. Inspired by our young apps makers, we took up the challenge to see how apps can help solve problems in the world's emerging economies. So can Nancy come up with an app for, say, sexual health? Hello, Hi. Time to step into the local internet cafe. Yeah, great, nice sure. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How can I help you today? Yes. Nancy's got lucky. The cafe owner's developing a system that collects text messages between, say, Joe and Bob, and shares them with whoever they choose. 
they can use the system to disseminate simple sexual health messages. So you can create uh, a, a, a mobile application for the whole community. Sure. You know, so that sure. the community can be able to manage its own uh, health issues. Mm. You know, it can see how many uh, people we have were infected with this. Uh, mm. How many people are taking treatment? You know, sure. how many people are getting better? Sure. You, they are one of those sure. kind of things. It's managed by, by the whole community, not only the healthcare system. Cool. I'm blown away. Mm -hmm. In our four other Life Apps films, we'll follow the message from London's Shoreditch Roundabout right across the world. Phone apps, a solution, and inspiration.